Greetings, University United Methodist Church. I'm so glad to be with you today and to also be with Reverend Charlie Baber. Welcome, Charlie. Hi, thanks, Toby. Charlie is our youth minister, and we are meeting today to talk some about the sermon from this past Sunday. Justin preached on um, Jesus bringing Lazarus back from the dead, and I was wondering, Charlie, what your takeaway from the sermon was. Sure, I think um, what stood out to me the most from the sermon was uh, the importance of human emotion in Christian life. A lot of times we think of our emotions as passions that just come and go or things that we need to have this great control over. Mm -hmm. um, but Justin talked about uh, the, the suffering that is experienced in this life brings about real emotions of sadness and uh, often fear and that sadness when combined with fear can often lead to anger. And he talked about ways that um, in our anger we tend to blame others or even blame God for what's gone wrong. And um, what I found so validating in this, this sermon was, or in the scripture, was that um, Christ shares in our emotions, that Christ um, wept. He shared in this sadness of uh, Mary and Martha and all the friends of Lazarus, um, but he also shared in the the dismay and the anger around suffering and death um, and said that he was deeply disturbed um, uh, and so there's this sense in which Jesus shares in our deepest emotions uh, and validates those for us. Mm. It is hard for me to bring my messiest emotions to God, but it feels a little better to know that Jesus has also experienced those kinds of messy emotions. Yeah. Mary and Martha seemed to be in some of the same situation that I was, that they were really frustrated and just wasn't sure about how to express that frustration to Jesus. Yeah, it's interesting uh, that both Mary and Martha bring the same question to Jesus, and he has this completely different response to each of them. Um, first, Martha asks him, as she says, uh, Lord, if only you would have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Um, and that, that, que that very question uh, gets to the root of uh, God's presence with us in our times of suffering. Like, you weren't with us, and my brother died, and now we're all suffering. Um, and Jesus' response to Martha is, is this bold claim that he says, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me uh, will never die but have everlasting life. And this is this bold claim of Christ's divinity, that he is truly God, and that his resurrection and life power is, is here in the here and now. But then uh, just moments later when Mary comes and says the exact same thing to him, uh, Lord, if only you would have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Instead of um, sort of chastising her and giving this big, deep theological point, Jesus just simply begins to weep with her mm. and cry and um, enter into her sadness. And so we see in this passage um, just the, the coupling of Jesus as uh, both God of the universe and as fully human, as, as one of us. And through uh, Mary and Martha's deep questioning of uh, where God was, where Christ was when their brother died, um, we get this sense that um, Christ is both all-powerful um, and yet also deeply with us in our woundedness and in our suffering and sadness. Mm. That gives me comfort, especially during a time right now. So in this time of real um, sadness and sickness in our world right now, do you see God working? Do you see goodness happening around you? Sure. It's, it's one of those things that you really have to um, have your eyes open to look for. And I, I see that it, it feels like we're on sort of a, a forced sabbatical, all of us, um, where we are um, not able to keep our normal rhythms of life and a lot of things that we do to distract ourselves or that honestly give us purpose and motivation have been taken away from us um, for we don't know how long. And um, with that loss of control comes a sense of grief, and we may not name it as grief, but um, we are all, in a sense, grieving 
um, the loss of control over our own lives. And, um, and God is also giving us this space to breathe, the space to rest and relax in his presence and remember that he, the Lord, is God and, um, and that we are not alone. And, um, and so I, I think that we have the opportunity to see that goodness when we take time for our spiritual disciplines that we actually have for once. We actually have no excuses to make <laughs> for not praying more or reading scripture. Um, and, uh, and I find that as the father of two little ones, I am in great need of the spiritual gifts of patience and imagination and motivation um, to, um, to help engage them in ways that are truly gifts for me, um, as I get all of this extra time with my little ones and my family right now. Um, but I also see God's gift in the creative ways people are giving back to the community and um, serving through the gifts of art and through um, music and through um, service. Um, people are so creative in connecting with each other right now and mm -hmm. sharing um, a, a true sense of community even when we can't be physically present with each other. It is. That has been amazing to see those things. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you for helping us to reflect on the sermon from this past Sunday and to think about ways that we might be a part of what God is doing in this world by working on our spiritual renewal. We'll see you next Sunday.